Uh, we're here in Alta Carmen, our Burton port, um, in the west coast of Donegal, participating in a, in a project to investigate, excavate and understand a shipwreck that was uh, discovered here a few years ago. We work for the National Monument Service, which has an underwater archaeology unit, set up over 10 years ago and we've been documenting shipwrecks around the west coast, around the entire coast of Ireland. We've been doing mainly a desk-based study of that and then in tandem with that we've developed our underwater skills for exploring sites underwater, surveying and investigating and excavating. As well as that we've built up um, close connections with a lot of dive groups, clubs, dive centres around the country. As they became more aware of our existence when they discovered wrecks they very invariably are very often reported them to us. And, uh, a few years ago, uh, back around 2007-2008, Liam Miller uh, came across a, a shipwreck near Borton Port. Subsequent to that, we carried out a survey and it's in pretty shallow water. It seems to, at that stage, we assessed it and largely most of the lower hull was intact from stem to stern. And the small investigation showed that the artifactual preservation was very good, down to organic material like leather and other items then were found such as pottery and armaments which suggested that it might be a warship of maybe 16th century date. So Connie Kelleher led the investigation. So we're here in Donegal in uh, Burton Port on the Rutland Island wreck. This is our second uh, main season of excavation. We're continuing to excavate out the inside of the wreck itself, recovering the artifacts from the inside of the wreck. And again, it's first stage conservation that we're doing with those here um, in Burton Port. And um, they'll go on to the National Museum who um, will be doing the final and uh, uh, full conservation of the artifacts with a view to putting them hopefully on display um, down the line. We're also recording in detail the actual structure of the, uh, the wreck on the seabed. We're not going to be recovering this, the wreck itself, um, we're leaving it in situ. Um, but we're recording it in detail with a view to hopefully reconstructing it afterwards um, on paper and getting an idea of what the ship looked like and maybe telling a bit more story about the ship itself and then tying the artefacts into that story. Following a meeting with the National Museum, it was decided that the artefacts on the wreck would be potentially under threat because it's such a shallow site and so vulnerable to uh, interference that might disturb the, uh, the site and the, the condition of it. And we reported it up in the department that we work for our search in the Belta. So because of that we came back again. We were given a budget to investigate the wreck and to retrieve the artifacts from it and then to um, and to try and get an understanding of the ship and the structure. The um, ship is well preserved from stem to stern. The, the part of the rudder section is still intact. So there's a lot of work to be done in terms of analysis and investigation, you know, following the excavation. Once the excavation is finished and the analysis on the uh, artifacts is um, underway, one of the more important things to consider is the actual condition of the wreck itself and its, uh, and its preservation long term. Because we're not intending on recovering the shipwreck itself, it will remain in situ on the seabed with a view to preservation in situ. We have to really this year start to think about the long term preservation of the site on the seabed and the whole concept of the environmental effects on the site long term has to be looked at. With, it, with this in, in mind, we've brought in Dr. David Gregory from the Museum of Denmark to really advise us on those environmental factors, um, including the effect of shipworm. There's both old and new ship. Uh, worm uh, on the site, both Torido novalis and Gribble, and this is uh, uh, very obvious in a lot of the timbers that are exposed over time. So Dr. Gregory is giving us advice and diving with us and taking core samples to um, look at the possible and uh, long-term preservation of the site itself. Working with uh, Dr. Gregory, we're also um, putting down this um, kind of um, sacrificial matting and sacrificial timbers on the wreck site, really as an experiment to see how we can trap sediment on the wreck to cover it afterwards. Once we're finished on the site this year, we will recover the whole site, really to stabilize it, to ensure that it doesn't scour uh, around the wreck and timbers become loose and dislodged. So we'll be covering the entire site, but we're putting down one or two experimental areas, um, again, um, under advice from, advisement from Dr. Gregory, um, this matting that may be a sediment trap, as well as these floating um, sacrificial timbers that we'll be able to come back and look to see what the scale of um, 
marine wood borers are on the site so that we can start building up a picture of how um, under threat the site is from an Im environmental factors over time. So when we leave the site this year we'll have um, backfilled the site and we'll have put a layer of sand to protect the timbers because if they're exposed the, the worms will get into those, the live worm, and we're sandbagging the entire area that we excavated this year and we'll then put a final layer of sand over the, the, the wreck itself and really it'll be totally stable um, until we come back next year. So what we hope to go away with this year really is the artefacts that we're continuing to excavate and recover that have started to tell us about the story of life on board the ship, the barrels, the bits of leather and the musket shots um, about the people who were on board and recording the ship structure. Hopefully we'll start building up a story of the ship and the wreck itself and how it became to be wrecked here and really ultimately to try to tell the story of the ship, its wrecking and what happened to it afterwards. The work we're doing on the Rutland Island Wreck is really part of the wider brief of the Underwater Archaeology Unit where we're quantifying and managing the resource and the information that we're getting here from this particular wreck site will feed back into the overall work we're doing on shipwrecks, particularly the quantification of the shipwrecks and the shipwreck inventory of Ireland which has been compiled uh, by my colleague Carl Brady in the Underwater Unit and he's uh, focusing really on compiling the records and the known records of the shipwrecks around the coast of Ireland. My name is Carl Brady, I'm an archaeologist with the Underwater Archaeology Unit, I'm based here in the headquarters of the unit in the Custom House in Dublin City Centre and I have a, the main responsibility of maintaining and developing the Shipwreck Inventory of Ireland which is a comprehensive database of shipwrecks um, from Irish waters. We're working in collaboration here with the Geological Survey of Ireland and um, they're supplying their vessels so we're working from their vessels the RV Kiri and the RV Geo as our dive platform and they're also carrying out their work um, surveying the harbour and doing bathymetry and geophysical survey um, in tandem with our work on the shipwreck site so it's very much a collaborative effort um, uh, during the project on the Rutland Island wreck. So again, also the work here obviously is very tied into the local community. We're working very closely with them, the divers who discovered the wreck, but also the locals themselves in Burtonport because they're very much involved in what's going on here from a heritage point of view. The whole concept of the cultural tourism and trying to get cultural tourism off the ground in the area. Our, uh, my department and my minister is very much behind uh, the promotion of cultural tourism and we would hope maybe that down the line the wreck site uh, could be opened up for divers and for the local community while also we're tasked with the long-term preservation and management of the site. The story will be told and it'll give us a new understanding in many ways of not only of the wrecks of that period but also of the processes, uh, the wrecking process and the need to understand uh, that process and the conservation process in relation to these, this, this kind of material and enable us to make sort of decisions and the call on, on any future discoveries of the same kind. After us, this kind of work will be going on for hundreds of years, you know. So the foundations we lay down now hopefully will be built on and will lead to future discoveries.